Louder Than Life, September 22nd through the 25th in Louisville, Kentucky, featuring Nine Inch Nails, Slipknot, Kiss, and Red Hot Chili Peppers, plus more than 70 incredible bands. Tickets are going fast. Get them now and learn everything you need to know about Louder Than Life at the link in the description. We have a very special guest today, one of the most legendary bands in all of the universe, not just planet Earth here. We have Blothar of Gwar with us right now. I just saw you all a few weeks ago on tour. You had Necro Goblicon. You had the Native Hal. Who else was on that tour? No, I can't remember. Goblin Cock. <laughs> Something like that. What was it? Uh, uh, yeah, the Native Howl. They were like a bluegrass thrash band um and then uh yeah goat whore boy that goat was really asking for it, it a great one the great lineup absolutely and it was a killer tour and i was so excited to be there uh, me and my brother went we had a fantastic time the show was great uh we posted a bunch of clips from the show and uh this is why i wanted to really do an interview with you guys because i'm like man people fucking a lot of these younger cats don't know what's up with war. Uh, we were posting videos and they're like, what? They beheaded the president? What? They performed an onstage abortion? I'm like, where have you guys been? Uh, my boy House of Mass, he said the same thing. He's like, we have failed here that people don't understand the uh, legend of Guar. Is this something you're seeing as well? These younger cats don't seem to know what's up? Ah, well, I don't know. I've never liked cats very much anyway. But, uh, no, I mean, some, you know, people, Guar's, Guar, they don't know what to expect. You know, they're also, especially now, there's so much information. They're also fucking jaded, even though they don't know anything. I mean, if there's one group of people that don't know anything, young people know jack shit. Do you hear me? Nothing. You don't know anything. Absolutely nothing. Give up. Give up. But still, <laughs> you know, they, so, so. You get one of these smarmy little fucks in front of Guar and they lose their minds because, yeah, they see, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is good shit. And that's glad. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I kid, you know, I, I'm joking. We appreciate our fans. We appreciate people that come to see the show and that are freaked out by it. I mean, that's great. You know, we want people uh, who don't know what to expect uh, at a Guar show. And we want to ruin young lives and put them on a path of, you know, self-destruction and uncertainty for the rest of their, so <laughs> that's what we're hoping for. Yes. Yes. And that's what you guys deliver. And people don't understand if you have never seen Gore, if you're watching this channel and you haven't seen them for the first time, I would argue there is no better ticket. There is no better show that you're going to see, but you need to be prepared. You're going to be covered in blood. You're going to see a lot of yeah. death. They, they, you guys kill like the best of them. How many, how many people do you think you've killed over the course of your career on stage? Oh man, I don't know. I mean, thousands, you know, <laughs> at least, <laughs> I mean, you know, you figure we kill every show. We kill at least five or six, uh, <laughs> usually more. And then, uh, you add that to, uh, you multiply that to by, you know, 50 shows a year, at least usually more than that close between 50 and a hundred gigs a year. Uh, depending on what era Gore kind of toured a little bit more early, early on, um, than we do now. Uh, but that, you know, that's a lot. I mean, because we've been doing it for 35 years. So it's a lot. Have you noticed a difference in, um, I don't know. You guys have always been this band. I remember like the old Sally episodes and stuff like when they, when you guys would go on the show and this is demonic and this is bad. Do you still, does the band still get a lot of pushback for uh, material that some people may wrongly find uh, to be offensive? Oh, I think they are right to find it offensive. It's absolutely. Offensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we get, we get, I don't know. I mean, we don't get so much pushback anymore now. Now it's different, you know, like the, the people that are, the people that you, <laughs> that, that, that are monitoring speech are, uh, more of the, uh, it's the sort of, uh, you know, well, you know what I'm talking about, liberal, like, uh, just young folks or university students or, uh, 
people that have attached themselves to causes that uh, really a lot of times it looks to me like what they're the only thing they are interested in is using that the power of the internet to take people down. <laughs> Um, you know, at least yeah. there was a sort of, of real moral indignation with dipshits like Tipper Gore and her husband. Um, yeah. Also liberals, by the way. But I mean, like politically, I think probably Gore definitely, we try to be as nonpartisan as possible uh, because we just don't give a shit. Uh, we kill right. everything. Um, but, you know, at, at, I would say that over the years, the band is definitely probably skewed left <laughs> um i mean in that sure. we're all about freedom of expression uh you know it's just that those polls have changed i mean like now right it's just uh it, it does feel a little restrictive sometimes but you know what man there's a good side to all of that there's a good side to it i hate the term politically correct because i think that like why the fuck why shouldn't people try to to do their best you know why shouldn't they try uh right. so I, I, I don't I don't mind it. Uh, it's just that, you know, I think that there's a balance to be had there um, and that some people miss that balance. Uh, but Guar so far has not run afoul of that because we're smarter than we look and we <laughs> and don't we look very smart? I mean, yeah, yeah you know, I mean, we think about these things and uh, there are people in the band that that know a tour thing a thing or two about uh about culture we've been around a few blocks <laughs> absolutely and 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 that shows that you guys have been so strong in the game for so long you're literally unstoppable and i wanted to ask as well uh one of the things i've wondered about i don't know what the status of this is throughout the pandemic touring stopped and everything do you anticipate, because I, I, I've gone to multiple of these and I, I had the t literally the time of my life. Do you think that the barbecue could ever possibly make a return? Is that something that could happen? I think maybe? it's a very good chance. It almost it came damn close to making a return this year. It's just, uh, you know, it's going to look like a different, it's going to be a different event. I mean, uh, we sure. couldn't, you know, luckily, and this is the way it should be, uh, Guar is, uh, I mean, Guar's always been a very DIY band, right? So um, before we were kind of DIY in our own festival, right? That's not really how Slipknot does it at Knot Fest, right? Like, I mean, you know, they, they've pretty much farmed that work out. They've got a crew. They've got people who are doing that for them. It's not, you know, clowns not hopping on the phone and booking fucking sponsors for the gigs, right? Like... Um, but sure. that's, you know, Guar is a different beast. So, uh, it was a lot of work and thankfully now, uh, we're too busy. We've got a lot going on and we've got, you know, we, we really don't have the time. So if we get into a situation where it is kind of a deal like Slipknot, right, where we can hand this off to some people, uh, we certainly would do that. Um, so yeah, you may see that happen. And, and this year, it almost happened in partnership with a uh, a brewery that we're working with, um, but it didn't. You know, it it just didn't. And even then, it wasn't going to be uh, the kind of barbecue that people remember, right? Which is uh, where you have like Lamb of God play and uh, you know just a iced tea and a bunch of acts. I mean, it was probably going to be a little more pared down than that, and that's how it'll probably start back up. But you know, it. You never know sure. if it works, it'll get back up to that point. Good, because we are grateful for anything we can get. Anybody who went to the barbecue, I know people out there, it, it's the stuff of legends. It's historic. And uh, I will do anything I can to promote the barbecue if that comes back. Um, because we just had such a great time there. And, and it was a beautiful festival site. It was just absolutely uh, awesome. You know, what, what does Gwar have? Um, are there any talks of uh, upcoming tours or anything? I apologize if you've already announced. Uh, no, I mean, we're, we're doing, we're going to Europe. We're playing at uh, Bloodstock um, and doing a bunch of, uh, there's some other festival dates in there. Um, playing in Poland, like just about a hundred miles from the, the Ukrainian border. So that should be exciting. Oh, goodness. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Wow. And then we've got some stuff going on. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, when we come back and there's a, we're, there's a fall tour that's set up. I know that we've announced riot fest and I think we've, we've announced louder than life, but there's a lot of other 
festivals yes. that are coming up. And then there's a lot of, you know, the, the touring we haven't really announced, but we'll be out there in September and October and into, into November. I want to ask you about the DIY nature of the band because I very much, you know, as a business owner myself, and you have to figure shit out. Oftentimes you have to learn a bunch of different jobs. And when the Gore touring production is out there, I was very blown away by how many moving parts there are, you know, not to get too down in the weeds here, but you know, is, is that something that has just carried on with the band? Is this, what goes into that taking the, the Gore machine out on the road? Well, Gore is an expensive band to move. That's for sure. Um, there's a lot of people on the crew, uh, you know, I mean, not compared to, I, I think for a band that's at our level and, and playing in the venues that we play in, uh, you know, it's, we, we have a, we have a pretty big crew. Um, and we go out and you've got, but somehow it's never enough, right? <laughs> Cause we've right. got people that run the spew tanks. We've got, you know, four, 100 gallon tanks of liquid with that that are operated through air compressors we've got uh a lighting man we've got set sets that we build and this tour that we're doing in the fall is going to be spectacular it's going to be uh you know production wise it's going to be up there with the, the first tour that we did with me singing in 2014 uh it's 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 going to be a big deal and the band's really enjoying a kind of renaissance which is nice right uh and yes. uh and that's fun it's it's a good time to be in the band it's a good time to to go see the band it is i mean i can say that personally i just saw you guys a few weeks ago and it literally one of the best shows i've ever seen it was so fun everybody there smiling everybody's having a great time and i just want to say the fact that you guys I was watching the show and I'm like, they're especially in today's times where people are a lot more hesitant to put themselves out there. They're a lot more hesitant to you guys don't give an inch. You are, it's the most offensive show. It's the most outrageous show. And I appreciate you guys so much for just keeping it as fucking wild and rock and roll as it can possibly be killing anything and everything. Um, and, and it's just been, so special. Now, talk about the relationship with Necro Goblicon. That is a band that's really on the rise. Shout out to y'all for bringing them out with you. What is John Goblicon like to tour with? I'm very interested. I would love to interview him sometime. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's what they're called. Neighbor, blah, 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 blah. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they are. Yeah. I mean, John Goblicon, obviously, he's an interesting character. He's got a lot of... Uh, <laughs> got a lot to say yes and he's very involved with everything uh I, I i liked him i liked him quite a bit their singer is a wonderfully uh talented uh musician um and uh and he's assembled a, a crew of of musicians that that are all very capable players and they do it with uh with 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 passion which is what you know, what, what makes a difference, but, uh, they were a fun band to watch. I mean, once I got used to the, you know, cause the sound is different. Um, it's always interesting to me. You talked about, you know, youth, right. Uh, this has happened to me on numerous occasions. It's so funny when, uh, you've got kind of three or four different generations of musicians and they look at something and they, and they relate it back to something and, and it's always different. Um, and you know, I hear their I hear their melody lines on the keyboards, and I'm like, "Well, this sounds like the Stranglers." I mean, that's there's no other band that jumps to my mind that really uses those kinds of, uh, um, like, just <laughs> for lack of a better term, and to make it easy to understand, that many notes, right, in a melody. There's a lot right. of, of notes and uh, and and those keyboard lines and, and the way that they're using the keyboards in the songs. So um, that's really interesting. Then you talk to them and they're like, yeah, I've never heard of the Stranglers. I have no idea who they are. And, and, and I believe them. You know, they don't. <laughs> right. Um, right. So it's always, that's always interesting, but uh, they were, they were a great band and they deserve what, you know, they're actually doing something different. I'm, I'm glad that they're bringing keyboards back into metal. Yes. Um, 
because you know it's the great the the keyboard the piano in particular is the greatest instrument uh that there is i mean and then uh, you know other than other than uh an orchestra a symphony orchestra which is a great acoustic instrument this but then you watch them play live and you just i don't know it's just so awesome the synths and the and the organs and all that stuff uh and then they're and they're very talented uh, you know, the rhythm section is, is really cool. Um, and they write good songs and they're funny and they have an idea. And that's what Guar likes. We like yes. bands that have ideas, you know, because it's just so fucking boring. I mean, that's how we started was that, you know, you got all these bands just standing up there and whether, and at the time, you know, hardcore was going on and it's like, well, you got your uh, touchy feely emo types that are crying about shit. And then you got you got your rough and tumble bullshit Krishna skinheads like the Crow Mags, and they're screaming about shit and looking tough and beating people up. But either way, on stage they're boring as fuck. You know, it's just boring. And like, uh, and nobody was summoning the devil. Like, you know, if you're if you're a band, you could some bands could get away with it. You know, but that's because they weren't yeah. just standing there. They were there. There was a story almost just built into them as individuals. Um, but that's few and far between, you know, so there wasn't a lot of effort going on into shows at, at that time. And it's kind of gone back to that, right? You've got a lot of bands that are uh, interesting and, and uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on in music, too, but there's always some aspect of it that is repulsive. I don't know. <laughs> Something about it that makes I feel it that. suck. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is, I could not, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you is that it seems these days as if, uh, you know, th there are bands out there, of course, you know, Slipknot's been around for a while, but you have bands a little bit newer, you have Ghost, but you really, and, and of course, Necro Goblicon, but you, you don't have very many bands that are like investing in, for lack of a better term, theatrics. And, uh, and I feel like the, the idea of entertainment itself has been kind of, put by the side and now a lot of it is about guys who are saying well my shit's harder to play than yours okay uh and and it's it's not necessarily about putting on a kick-ass show and I, I that's why i was so blown away to see you guys just absolutely ripping it up and it was just amazing the, you know i mean that would be interesting if they also all didn't sound exactly the fucking same so like you know yeah um I, I am very disinterested. If your if your band has more than four words in the name, then go <laughs> right. Three is really too much, right? We're we're getting into too much. <laughs> so, uh, you know, with the exception maybe of Rage Against the Machine, um, it's just, uh, and I'm sure that there's other exceptions out there, but it's like, yeah, I mean, you're right. There is a this kind of uh, emphasis on musicianship in some ways, but, uh, you know, the, and, and, you know, they're, they're not forgetting the songs. There's songwriting there too, but it's weird. It's like, it's not, that doesn't really translate into innovation all the time. I mean, there are bands that are doing things that are new, um, you know, and some that, some that uh, a lot that aren't, but, uh, I don't know. I mean, you're right. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm very. I. I have, Guar. Guar is a punk band, essentially. I mean, that's what we came out of. I don't think that's yes. what we are now, but uh, that's where we started. And so our relationship to uh, what you're describing as virtuosity um, has always been a little fraught. <laughs> and I think Guar and virtuosity is two words that most people wouldn't put together, but. <laughs> But nonetheless, the people who are in this band know how to play. And I challenge any of those fucking fruitcakes to stand up there in the middle of that three ring gangbang circus and try to play music because yeah. it's not fucking easy. Yeah, that that is that is the thing. There's I mean, you guys are have you ever or anybody in the band ever, you know, been I'm sure this has happened, been injured or something by some sort of mishap with everything moving around on the stage it seems like you've got to have lightning fast reflexes well, i mean it's just you know <laughs> in the early days 
like, I mean, before, for instance, when I played bass in the band, I played, uh, I was known for playing a Steinberger bass guitar, right? Which had no head on it. Um, and I remember people would say, you know, why do you play that guitar? It's stupid. Because this was back before anybody played them. Um, it was like me and Flabba Holt and a bunch of like reggae bass players that played them. And that's it. Um, and the reason was because, uh, that, you know, when I would go out there with my 68 Fender Jazz, <laughs> uh, it would, the, the tuning pegs would get caught in the chains of the, the various characters that were hanging off their oh arms and then gosh. get yanked out of my hands. And that happened on several occasions. I mean, uh, either that or the input jack would just get completely ripped out uh, by somebody tripping over it. You know, I mean, th those were, we didn't really have wireless at that particular point, but um, that kind of shit, I mean, that's a lot to worry about. Right. And that, and that shit was hap would happen a lot. I mean, so you, you make adjustments over the years. You start playing a Steinberger. You start using wireless. You figure out how to, uh, you know, but, but we never were willing to sacrifice because the performance was part of our expression. Um, we're not going to give that stuff up, you know, and, and especially not for something as boring as sitting there and playing fucking scales really fast. You know, it's like that's not we're yeah. interested in drama and theater and improv theatrical improv yes. those are the things that we're interested in as artists as musicians um and it's it's part of what we do yeah and and you do it so well and it's it's just unbelievable to not just be where you are now but to have been so consistently delivering these type of performances and i do feel like the they have really we don't have enough of the emphasis on theatrical performances in especially metal when you're at a metal show now you look at like the edm scene and things like that and their production value um in many cases is, is oh, yeah. higher than you see in in rock and metal you have a lot of the artists are not out there um it, it's just you know i mean there's this guy machine gun kelly he gave an interview and it was very controversial where he says you know people don't dress they don't wear they don't dress up like rock stars this and that i think the the very small basis of what he's saying did have some truth to it. His delivery uh, was very poor, though, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, what do you think of kind of the new... Sorry, go ahead. The dude's got more money than anybody, like, in music. I mean, probably not, but he's he's got a lot of, of, of money sure. and had a lot of success. And if you use that as a measure of quality, you know, that, that, that's not a really a, a really smart thing to do. But <laughs> it's a measure of something, right? I mean, he's doing something right. Uh, and he hasn't stuck a gun in there. Well, he has stuck a gun in his mouth, but apparently he didn't pull the trigger. So, you know, I mean, this is yeah. not easy. The shit that he's doing is not easy, right? It's, it's a killer. It leaves people dead for real. Um, yeah. You know, waking yeah. up, being able to handle uh, all of this. It's just, it's fucking hard, man. And, you know... This kid, for better or worse, uh, I like his emphasis on theatrics. I like that that he knows that you have to have a visual presentation and you want to have fun. I mean, sure, he's a loudmouth little shithead, you know, but I mean, who's not? He's entertaining. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and he takes himself probably a little too seriously, right? I mean, like he it happened yeah. because he hasn't had any kind of life. You know, he's been that and that's fucking weird and gross. But like at the same time, <laughs> yeah you know he, he's 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 managed to be uh you know to keep it going and that's so he's at right. least that smart right to, smart enough to survive um and i don't think people should take that for granted um but yeah. uh yeah i mean i will say that i do think that theatrics have changed a lot um now i i think that there are more bands that are theatrical really in a way um, they don't have as much of a narrative, but there are certain bands that, that, you know, they're, they're concerned with their visual presentation. Um, and the influence of Guar really culturally is more that, uh, just the, I think you see it more in bands like Cannibal Corpse, right. And just the, a level of sort of, uh, 
expression that uh you know carcass even even though i mean carcass was around and doing what they were what they were doing but still it's like bands like guar and carcass had sort of an impact on what people were able to say you know that's why it's so shocking to me it's not shocking it's little shocking it's it's absolutely not shocking it's it's fucking unsurprising but it's disappointing um to hear people say you know well look guar is a they're as soft as a baby's ass now, you know, it's like, really, you know, that ain't true. (laughs) We're not keeping up with the standard that we set. Is that what you're trying to say? Like, you know, I mean, because that's what, that's what it is. I mean, you know, Guar had that impact on music and on culture. Like we, we changed things in a way. And so for, uh, for people to hold us up to that work and say that we're falling short, you know, go fuck yourself. It, I mean, it's just not true. It's it's not even based in reality in any way, shape, or form. I posted a clip that I took on my phone uh, on, like, reels on Instagram, and it was a clip of of uh, somebody from the band and then John Goblicon performing an onstage abortion. <laughs> and people in the crowd, I mean, half of the audience was like, they didn't, they were like, this is a ritual, this is sick, this is demonic, what the fuck is going on, why are you here? And then the other half of people are like, come on, this is fucking gore at their <laughs> finest. And a lot of people take, they really read in to uh, like, oh, they beheaded Joe Biden. This is a political statement. What president hasn't Gore beheaded? I mean, this isn't a, this is not a new thing. You guys are equal opportunity uh, beheaders or, you know, whatever. Well, we are, doing. but let me say this, that like, it wasn't until Trump that people started getting their fucking panties in a wad about all of it, right? Like, uh, yeah. you know, what we noticed was that suddenly when we killed Trump, Guar had become that that's partisan, right? Like, like the, the belief is that, uh, Guar is now thought of as, you know, being sort of radically liberal. Um, even though, like you said, we killed Biden, even though we have done all of the, you know, all of these things, it's like, uh, they were saying you were like super conservative <sighs> is what they were saying with Biden. So it's like, they've been, they've been on both They're just now, fucking apparently. idiots, man. I mean, like how yeah. could that possibly, I mean, it, that's just like pure ignorance. I mean, like, like Guar is, yeah. we're not even South Park conservative, right? Like, uh, right. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't see how we could have that 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 charge leveled against us but i didn't see how we could have the charge the charge of being like super radical liberal uh leveled against us either i mean it was interesting with trump you know because really it was the first time we killed a president that people started crying about it and 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 reading into it as a uh, immediately political statement that was against the person that we were killing um it, the other interesting thing was that they didn't mind so much. Like a lot of times where, where people really drew the line, typically American, uh, not with the violence, not with ripping Trump's chest open, but when he fell to his knees and started sucking my dick, they didn't like that. <laughs> that was the, br- Oh you know? man. So, I mean, that yeah, was the line. Yeah. And, and I mean, you also bring out, you bring out Putin, you bring out G from China and, uh, you guys on stage literally defeat, uh, the axis of, uh, whatever they're called, right uh, right on stage. Yeah. Yes. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you obviously stepped into the band after the late, uh, Dave Brocky passed away. Um, very, very legendary figure, um, in metal miss miss dearly what did that mean to you personally to you know be asked and obviously we have the benefit of time now you have you stepped into an impossible situation and you have very much delivered you know what did that mean to you on a personal level well uh i mean initially it was going to be temporary um and uh the the documentary that we're doing that we're getting ready that it's coming out really later this month, at least in the first run in some, uh, theater, theatrical situations like, uh, uh, Alamo draft houses and things like that. Just, you know, it's all starting 
Is that out now? Where can people find uh, out? Well, it's that? coming out on Shutter. Uh, we we did announce it on Shutter, okay. and then these. I don't know if these. I don't think the the theatrical dates have been released, but there there's going to be some. Um, and in Virginia, yeah. Well, actually, it has been released because they're all over. I mean, they're all over the country. The Alamo draft houses are put are put. Okay. Great. Um. So and and a lot of the story is told in that. Uh, in that documentary, but essentially I got a call, uh, to come back so that they could do this, um, barbecue. And we did it and we were impressed with the way that it worked, the way that it sounded. Um, I was, yeah. There. And, and it, it was like, okay, well this, this, this could work, you know? And, uh, I didn't really think about it. It wasn't something I was entertaining. I, as far as I was concerned, once we did that, uh, the, the, it was like, you know, well, we might do one more thing somewhere out of town or something like that. Um, but then I got a call and they were like, look, let's do this. Like, just learn the tunes and let's do it. Um, and that was a big deal. Uh, it was a meaningful meditation, uh, to learn that material and to, uh, step up there and do it and, and just figure out you know, I mean, luckily I pretty well trained on how to listen uh, to music so I could, uh, pick out a lot of, I think what the essential qualities of, that's another thing that's interesting to me about fans, right. Or like, is like, uh, <laughs> what they hear in something, right. Like the, the, there's a surprising number of people who say, uh, you know, it's gotta be gruffer. Right. And, and I think that what they're, advocating for something that's gruffer than Brocky, right? Like there's something odorous. Yeah. Um, they're advocating for, you know, Randy from Lamb of God. They're advocating for like that type of vocal approach. And it's like, look, man, that's not what's there. Like whether it, maybe that's what you hear or what you take away from it. It's not what's there. And uh, so, uh, but you know, then there's also, there's a weird way how uh, to me about how, astute people are and how much they do hear that's absolutely right you know you'll hear uh they'll listen to a song like uh motherfucking liar and they're like you know why are there so few words you know there's it's just the same thing repeated over and over and it's like well that's what songwriting is right i mean that that's that's what uh and it's one of the ways that we separated this band with me singing from that band with odorous singing right is that odorous was very disinterested in hooks um, and more interested in humor. Uh, and he wrote a lot of yeah. lyrics, right? Like, so you'd have the last tour that we did. I mean, the difference is striking, right? The number of pages of printed lyrics, uh, regular font, regular, regular margins, right? You're looking at 40 some pages, like 42, 40 pages wow. of lyrics written out um, to learn for that for that, for that tour, um, compared to, and that had gone up over the years, right? Like scum dogs wasn't like that. Um, but it kind of got more and more and more and more. Um, so that by the end, by the time that you do, they did a, a record like battle Maximus, there was just a lot, not a lot of space left in those songs. And so, uh, one of the ways that we could give this an identity, uh, a musical identity was by changing that aspect, right? Like, like pulling back. So, you know, you put my songs in a set list and it looks like, you know, you're talking about 20 pages or, you know, so it's literally like half of what, uh, and that just, that has an effect, right? It gives the music more room. It draws more focus to the music. Um, and, uh, and, and it's also, it just so happens to be a much more typical way of doing things, right? That doesn't mean it's bad or it's wrong, uh, but it's traditional way of writing and singing songs so um but people pick up on that though uh and they're they're like something's different they can't really put their finger on it because they're not counting the words or anything but that's really what it is i'm curious about you know the the entire um i don't want to say outfit but basically the entire um the, what you guys perform in and how what does it what does the design without, you know, you don't have to get too much into it, but what does the design process look like 
for having a, a mask done and things like that. I, I, there's a lot of a surprise, like the House of Masks on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of people out there that are really fascinated by this process, and I've been watching that. And now I'm like, yeah, that is neat how these things. Apparently, there's a lot that goes into this. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it's uh, there are uh, first of all, officially, this isn't a fucking mask, right? This is my face. That's what Gore. Right. That's of how course. Gore has always played this. Um, but there are yeah. characters who do wear masks. Now I can tell you about them. That what they do is a life cast. Um, they take a mold, um, then they make a, uh, a, a essentially a, a plaster mold of that head, um, and then make a mask out of latex that is applied to that mold, um, and then shape it over top of it with like clay. Um, and building it up out, you know, it's a, it's a, they're sculpting a mask in the same way that they do Hollywood masks and things like that. Although I think like in, in some cases now they, they use silicone more than what Guar uses. Um, and then they make a, you know, they, they essentially make another mold that, so that this mask can be made again and again, right? Whatever mask they make. Um, and that's that's how that works. And then and then of course they're painted and pigmented and uh, all that stuff. And it's the same pretty much for most of the costume pieces, except for they don't start with a life mold like they do for the masks. That's so cool. That that I you know I I didn't never realize that it wow there really is this really involved process to put on these performances. And of course, yes, it is actually your face, anyways. Um, <laughs> but I, I, you know, I would, I'm curious to hear, like, what are some bands that you think that are younger, that are out there that you kind of feel like maybe they're doing this right. They're, they're a beacon of hope for the future. Of music. Well, I mean, they're not young, but I, I, I love Ramstein. I think that I just think they're, Hell their yes. mode of performance is so fucking cool. And, and, uh, you know, I wish they could do that stuff in the States and, and travel around. I think it really blow people's minds. Um, yeah, I just love the, and that's a deep, I would love I mean, to see them. you know, the guy is a pyrotechnician himself and he does all that shit for the band. It's, it's cool, man. And, uh, you know, but as far as like, you know, I mean, I do like, uh, Necro Um, I do like, uh, there's a lot, like you said, of, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's not in metal um, that is very theatrical. Um, and then there are, there are some, you know, some metal stuff that, that is, is leaning that way. Um, but I don't know about particular artists. I mean, uh, I just sort of know what I see that I like, you know, and then musically sort of, yeah. I mean, even though it's not like theatrical in the way that we do it, you know, just the energy of a band like Bear Claw, I mean, that's, super good uh good stuff i think um and uh i don't know <laughs> that's all that's going on right yeah. now as far as uh, live right. live performance and you know i mean it's interesting like yeah sure a band like ghost i mean the problem with ghost really to me is that well there, there's a lot i like about it but I'm i'm a little glad that they're more openly the tongue is more firmly planted in the cheek and more, uh, and that's more discernible in what they're doing now. Uh, because it really is just, it's fucking pop music, you know, it's like worshiping yeah. pop music. So uh, what an interesting concept. It's like, here's something that is, uh, you know, culturally maybe challenging, but then um, sonically not so much. Right. It's, it's, it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> He's, he seems to be going for, and I think he's, I've interviewed him a couple of times. He's a nice guy, but he seems to be going for like the image is, is very metal, but he is, he does seem to be trying to compose the music that is like eighties, um, pop rock that is like at the stadium level. I think that that is, is what he is trying to go for. I, per, I personally 
did really enjoy the time when it was like, who the fuck is this guy and who's in the band? And it's a big no. secret. And I always kind of, you know, I always kind of wished like we could, even with Slipknot, even with y'all, like, you know, I, I it's not that it doesn't, t- it doesn't take away from anything really, but like a, like the ultimate fanboy in me is like, I wish the internet wasn't around because then it would be like we would, it would be a mystery. And it, to me, it kind of adds to that spectacle. Yeah. You're not gonna, it's very difficult to do that. And there are a few bands who did it, but they've done it very well. And, 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 you know, the residence is one, uh, nobody really knows who they are. I mean, there, there are people, it's more widely known now, but, uh, you know, there's there's other bands like that too. Uh, there's a certain sacrifice of ego that goes on. Um, you know, I'm like Kiss, it. where it's like, okay, well, this, these are these are their real names. Um, you know, the, these are these guys wearing makeup, and it's like, and that's known, right? They're not uh, pretending to be monsters, um, and it's weird because, like, you know, <laughs> a band like. Uh, uh, Lordy is really very much like Kiss, right? It's like you, they do interviews with the guy, and he and he's just himself, which is this boring yeah. Swedish weirdo or wherever he, you know, <laughs> and like it, it just kind of a goober, you know. And it's like, and he sort of uses that as a mark of distinction, right? Like we're not like Guar, we don't believe we're monsters. It's like fucking boring is what you are like but yes. you know i mean at the same time they, they 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 write some good pop music man um and uh guars we sort of get it from both ends because you know <laughs> we don't write pop music but we don't write fucking black metal either right it's like not yeah and we're also not about to make the same record 15 times you know like and sure. Surprisingly, I mean, that's what people want. People want the same shit over and over again. That's what they want. It really is. I mean, the they, they, diversity, uh, variety, um, a lack of com- of conformity to uh, the 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 tenets of genre, sort of the process of inventing genre. Things aren't yeah. aren't rewarded in music in the music business. Um, everybody wants the musical equivalent of law and order SVU, right? It's the same thing. <laughs> well, that's what it is. It's, dun, well, dun. it's just a pattern. You know, it's like the same shit happens with, there's comfort yeah, in that. It's plausibly, maybe. plausibly different, but it's pretty much the same thing again and again. And there's bands that do that really, really, really well. And that I love, right? Like, uh, DC yeah. Slayer, um, or examples of that, you know, and then there's bands that try a little harder to me. Really, Metallica, they catch a lot of heat, but they fucking try and they try to do it that they haven't done before uh, because yeah. they're true musicians who aren't they don't want to get fucking bored, you know, and, and I don't yeah. blame them. So I think, you know, James Hetfield even recently was, uh, you know, he said something on stage to the effect of, you know, he was feeling maybe self-conscious because he was getting older and stuff like that. And I watched the video and you could tell like, okay, no matter how iconic their career is, no matter what the heights are that they've reached, this guy gives a fuck about putting on a good show. And it, it, that is clear to me. Um, and anyone who's seen them knows that, yep. I think. You know, it's just, I, I don't know. Um, what do you think about, um, or this is, this is something that's interesting to me. When I was watching you guys perform, and it changes a little bit. You never know what you're going to get at a gore show. How do you guys come up with like the the things that are going to happen on stage? Like, what's the creative? Is it just a bunch of this would be fucking crazy if we did this, and then you guys go out and make it happen? Is there is there a, a process for that? Uh, well, I mean, yes, there is, uh, but we're constantly redefining it. I mean, um, that's definitely how it how it used to be. Right? Is that we would. Uh, and and it's kind of it's it's really still mostly that uh, that we sit around and tell each other stories about what what should happen and come up with ideas <laughs> for it and try to you know come up with the funniest stuff and then we green light stuff and build it 
um, you know, the, th- the things that we like and that we want to, that we want to see on stage. Um, and it used to be really that we would try to, there were kind of a lot of different modes of it, right? It's like there, there's the elements of the story um, that were very loosely put together. And it was really all about like, well, we want to build, we want to build these characters called the fudgies and they're essentially like Sigmund the sea monster and they come out and run around and you can't see their feet and they're very funny. They look like ghosts, you know, like, like Pac-Man ghosts, you know, so we, we'd have that. Right. And then it, it didn't really fit in the story or anything, but it was funny as shit. Um, and so we'd do stuff like that. And then you'd have stuff that was more like where we we're just trying to gross each other out, you know, let's make a, let's make a catapult and, and put actual, like, like figure out a way to put fake shit in it and throw it out. <laughs> you know, so we just do stuff like that, you know, just, um, and then, you know, over the years it got a little more focused, uh, and now it's, uh, there's a method, you know, now we're using project management software. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have like a Slack yeah, team yeah, that sure. you guys We've are got a Slack through. channel and an Asana a stun a board that has you know who's working on the shit cannon, yeah. shit cannon project where are we at, where on, are we at on this shit- <laughs> dude that is hilarious man well Blothar, i just gotta say you you and guar are some of the all-time greats in metal it is an absolute honor to have you on you've been so generous with your time i cannot wait to see this documentary that you're talking about um, and, and if the barbecue comes back, I will do anything possible I can to promote it. Um, and I will definitely be there, uh, as well. And, and I'm just so grateful for what you guys have done for metal. Um, you're an inspiration. You guys are a, the prime example of a band that has done oh. it right. And, uh, thank, thank you, you, sir. 